The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, everyone, Clean Nation. This is Tracy Thompson here, and I am joined today with Ryan Zawicki. Um, say hi, Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Clean Nation. Uh, Ryan is one of our uh, more new, newer clients and who's just recently come into our next level program, which is super exciting. And we get to chat today, Ryan and I, and you get to listen in, lucky you, about uh, how he came into our world, where he's, you know, his kind of his story and what he's all about. So let me just give you a little back story on Ryan. Uh, He started PA Commercial Cleaning Services in June 2021, and he's got a little story about that, in Chester County, Pennsylvania, obviously in commercial. And uh, Ryan, yeah, why don't you share with me a little bit about your journey on how you got here? Sure. So uh, long story short, um, we started the business through a friend who was looking to get out of commercial cleaning. He was transitioning to another service business. Uh, But the the way I kind of knew to take advantage of the opportunity was actually for about two, three years before that, um, something was just sort of impressed on me. Can't really explain it that just kind of a vision of a cleaning business. I didn't know anybody who had one and it seemed Mm -hmm. weird to me coming from an accounting finance background, but I was like, (laughs) okay, whatever. Um, I found Mike's podcast years before I ever got into it, just started listening, kind of preparing myself, knowing that I kind of had that vision. Hmm. And then when I had this opportunity with my friend pop up, I'm like, there we go. So I was very familiar with Mike already. Um, I had listened to him for many years. I definitely didn't have the systems or processes, like didn't know how to do it, but I kind of knew how to think. Mm -hmm. So anyways, acquired the clients and been rolling since. Um, Started with Mike, I guess, about two and a half months ago. So pretty soon into when we started, about less than six months from when we started, we joined with Growing. Nice, nice. Yes. And, you know, a lot of people in Clean Nation out there, most of them starting cleaning and then, you know, doing the cleaning themselves and then evolve into, um, you know, what turns out to be an actual business. And so we have a lot of variety out there. Some people buy the business and come in the way you did. So this, you get to kind of give us a, a different vantage point than many of our other guests. So this is exciting. So Ryan, it, typically I would ask you, you know, what, what, needed to change or like, what was that epiphany moment in your business? But you were so new that, mm-hmm. um, and you had been exposed to Mike and his podcast, the podcast um, prior. I'm just going to move right into when you started, when you did take over and you started for the six months prior to coming to us, what was that like for you? Like just kind of being thrown into it. What was that like? Yeah. So really what we did was we just acquired the client. So there were no employees or anything. Mm. So it was my wife and I doing all the clients. Um, we had one really large client. We had, you know, my brother would help a few friends. We have a few other friends that are actually in the cleaning industry. So they would help. It was really my wife and I kind of just getting the lay of the land. Now, bef- before I even acquired it, I-, I always knew the end goal was to build this thing into a business. And that's why, you know, I joined so early because I knew where we were heading. But before we did that, uh, we want to get the lay of the land in terms of cleaning so we can train mm. people properly and just not look like we don't know what we're doing. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of it. Just kind of mastered the, the process of cleaning, kind of the way we want it done so mm-hmm. we can at least teach people in a standardized way. Yes. Um, and other than that, it was just kind of, you know, kind of the big thing I had us call was how are we going to go about acquiring clients? Yeah. Are we going to go about growing the team, having a good mm-hmm. culture? It's like, we know what we want to do, but it's like, how do we get there? Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's kind of the hang up. Um, and yeah, so we're just cleaning sort of flying by the seat of our pants for a few months. <laughs> well, you know what? I didn't know that, that that's very uh, interesting that you bought the clients, but not like the whole like shebang, not the whole like employees. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I saw the vision. That's what got <laughs> yeah. me in. I knew where it could be. Awesome. Well, this is really unique. I, I love that um, you saw enough 
of that vision to know that there was a lot more than just having clients, right? There's a lot more to it. And uh, growing a business is different, isn't it? Than just being a cleaner that owns the clients, so to speak, right? You own the business in the sense that you get the revenue coming in. But if you're doing all the cleaning, then that's pretty hard to scale. For sure. 100%. Right? Yeah. Awesome. What, out of curiosity, what was it about what Mike and Grow My Cleaning Company had to offer that you felt was different? Uh, I assume you did your due diligence and you wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that you were making the right choices. What, do you, what stood out to you? What were you desiring to get out of working with Grow My Cleaning Company? Sure. So I would say I'm definitely a student of business. It's something I've been just actively studying and uh, reading books and whatnot for about a decade. Hmm. Always had aspirations of having multiple businesses one day. And when when I found Mike, I'm like, okay, this isn't a snake oil guy. This is a guy who is speaking the language of a successful entrepreneur. And as someone who studied business for so long, I I knew it when I heard it. Um, So that instantly, I, I could trust Mike. And as I kept listening to the podcast, I'm like, okay, this is validated by everything else I'm reading from my own experience. Like I know what he's saying is real. This isn't just like a trying to make a money online scheme type deal. Right, um, right. So yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I'd love to have you share with everyone um, one of the things that surprised you. So when you came in and you learned something that you had one of those, everyone has that moment where they're like, oh, <laughs> okay. That makes sense. And you have that aha moment. What was one of the things that surprised you in um, your recent growth and your recent, what you've learned? What surprised you? I guess, um, I guess sort of uh, how much really needs to go into everything. And that's why you need to work on the business, not in it, Mm. because there's so much effort that needs to be applied into the little things. Like even just in so much as um, something as simple as going through the process of having like a name tag, like it's something that could be overlooked, but having that adds credibility in the eyes of employees, of prospect, of client, like all these little details. Mm -hmm. I mean, just kind of really getting a solid scope of building that package. So that way, whether it's for you, or if you want to sell it one day to really have top tier business, uh, that it's, it's worth a lot more than just sort of flying by the seat of your pants and kind of piecemealing things. Um, and that was kind of just the whole picture. (laughs) Absolutely. So, so drilling down a little bit, which, which part of the business have you found to be the most, I would say challenging, but you know, one that, that you go, all right, this definitely requires much more of a system, much more uh, focus than maybe you might have thought. But which one do you, which part of the business do you find is the most, um, needs the most focus? Yeah, I would say definitely employees. Mm. So, like, we've got our toes wet within there. Um, you know, we got our funnel going and whatnot. Yeah. But, um, you know, we hired two people. It ended up not really being a good fit. That's because we didn't have the, the right processes to really vet them properly. And then, mm-hmm you know, going through that kind of realizing the the extreme attention to detail that needs to be put into planning for the training and everything like it's uh, just can't really be done haphazardly. So we're back at the drawing board, sort of hashing all that out. Um, and that was kind of surprising was just, you know, obviously leading people is probably one of the most complicated things to do in a way. Um, and, and now that we've really got a handle on that, it's kind of like, whoa, this is intense, but in a good way, you know, it's a great growth opportunity, but there's a lot to consider. You said a mouthful, definitely. And I think there's a lot of people out there right now. I know there is out in Clean Nation that is um, either have been around for a while, but now are having challenges with hiring, having challenges with bringing on and training and um, and keeping good people. Because I this is a a worldwide phenomenon now that the pandemic has hit. You know, this is just a, the way that hiring is now for everyone. What would you say is now that you've been with us in Grow My Cleaning Company, what do you think some of the advantages that you have now with what you know? Maybe you can share a couple of those little inside baseball um, aspects of 
what you've learned about hiring and what makes what you do now different than maybe other companies? Gotcha. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll go into specific hiring and then kind of more general. Yeah. General, I will say a big benefit is um, <laughs> I love not having to necessarily overthink and second guess and analysis by paralysis, everything, mm. having a system in place, which I'm not just trusting because Mike's saying it, but there's so many people have gone through it. You know, you can see it's like I can ask a question, get an answer and trust it. Mm. That just uh, relieves so much stress and wasted yeah. time that that's incredible. Um, specifically to hiring, though. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the having a really great hiring ad, you know, so many hiring mm. ads are just so professional and boring. It's and boring. Like, yeah, right. it's like, why would you want to work there to, to have my soul sucked out of my body? <laughs> so learning how to write a great hiring ad itself is good. And then from that, you know, creating the whole process of really delivering that core value to people um, is, you know, being learned, uh, being taught how to do that yes. is definitely a huge thing that I just had a lot of question marks beforehand. So. So, so important. And, and Clean Nation out there, if, you're, if you've been frustrated with hiring, trust me, you are not alone. You're absolutely not alone. But what Ryan said is so, so important. And you mentioned it early on in our podcast. I just want to bring this back. How important fundamentally um, core values are, right? And when you're hiring new people, especially when you're hiring in the hiring process, how share with Clean Nation, how does how has your core values impacted the way that you hire and that whole process? Yeah. So one thing that Mike really illuminated, which I kind of vaguely understood, but now I definitely understand, is that core values truly should be the center of everything. Mm. Because when you have the core values, you know, I was actually telling my wife about this. Um it's like a person maybe has a job, but that doesn't define who they are. It's their core right. value. Same thing for the company. So like we might clean, but that's not even who we are. Who we are is the core values. We just provide a service, which is cleaning. So knowing what those core values are is the North Star for how we write a hiring ad, how we talk to clients, how we interview employees, how we go about training, how we go about discipline or firing and just everything. Knowing what that criteria is, if this is who we are as a company, it takes, again, so much sort of gray area is mm -hmm. like, what are we doing here? Because mm -hmm. if it's in line with the core values, we're good. If it's not, then it's not. So in terms of hiring, you know, putting that kind of language into the ad, you know, that can help filter people through, then go into the interview process, asking questions aligned with core values by the time we get them on site. Hopefully, assuming we did our job right, uh, they should be a much more solid match than just sort of Joe Blow, if that makes sense. <laughs> so. yeah, absolutely. It's so that's so important. Uh, you said it, Ryan. It, it's really the core of everything, isn't it? It's the North Star for all things in your business. Yeah. And I love that you said something really important too. I want to wanted to circle back around to is clarity of not being foggy and gray and not sure why are we doing this. Core values become that central, I call it like the hub, right? Uh, the, the, for the whole wheel. So, so important. And, and Clean Nation, if you haven't claimed your or articulated your core values and then communicated them directly with your team and, and operated your business that way, I just want to encourage you now, absolutely articulate your core values. In fact, Ryan, would you mind sharing your core values with us? Sure. Yeah. So, We've got uh, be real, mm. have fun, love others, work hard, and figure it out. Ah, it says so much, so much in so few words, but really powerful. Wow, ah, I love that. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you a little bit. What would you say in the short time that you've been here? It, it, I mean, in the the business as a whole, sure. in the industry, what would you say is one of the most prevalent myths or misunderstandings like you hear out in the space you know people talking about the industry as a whole what what do you think is the one biggest misunderstanding that cleaning companies tend to have yeah um i'd say there's kind of two and they're tied together okay one is doing residential and commercial together and then in that same vein just sort of doing anything to get business yeah Yes. Oh, amen. Amen. 
So share with everyone why. Why is that? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you literally just think of the, the way your own mind works, it, it's you're spreading yourself so thin. Mm. You can't direct your attention and focus and therefore your effort and get the results you want because you're spread too thin over too many things. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like I actually heard this yesterday listening to a podcast that the concept of balance is kind of all different points spread out in different areas equally. Really, what you need to do is focus. So, and that's the importance of having an issue on that. It, rather than, you know, if you're in commercial and residential, it's completely different how you're selling that, dealing with the clients. You really can't fully know what it is they need, how to service them. You, your mind cannot go deep enough into delivering what they need to drive the business where you want to get it. Um, and, and maybe the revenue will come in, but it'll be so chaotic. It won't be a pleasant experience. Absolutely. Amen. And I'll tell you what, Clean Nation, if you're out there and you've succumbed to the seduction of, oh, but we'll just take that one account. Hey, we're, they're giving it to us. We should take it, right? <laughs> um, we understand. Listen, it's, Ryan has been fortunate enough to have learned this early on and not have so made those mistakes. But if you are in a place where you're like, okay, yeah, I do post-construction, I do cleanups, I do, you know, windows, I do carpets, I do... <laughs> Is it pretty much anything anybody pays me for? Really consider what you can do if you focused all of that time and attention on one model, on one model. And that's really what it is, isn't it, Ryan? It's a business model. For sure. So yeah. it's not just, hey, I just took this random business. No, no, no. You've actually diluted your model. It makes such a difference. Yeah. And, and sort of in the same vein to what you're saying, also focusing on recurring revenue versus mm -hmm. one time revenue. Yes. Um, not only does that make a utter lack of predictability, mm. but it just, um, it makes planning and just scheduling a headache as well. So it just a lot you of can't pitfalls. scale. Yeah, exactly. Terrible. Yes. Yes. And, and listen, clean nation, your time is valuable. Your energy, your health, your sanity, right, is valuable. And when you're scattered and fragmented all over the place, you're spreading all that energy out, dispersed all over, and you can't ever really be totally free. Freedom comes from focus. Freedom comes from focus. So that's my one drop, mic drop for the day. <laughs> I was like, freedom comes from focus. Uh, so I'm going to put you then on the spot on what's the one piece of advice. If you had to give one piece of advice to people out there in Clean Nation about anything you think is really important, what would it be? Um, okay. I guess I would say uh, be willing to do uh, what we call uh, grow my cleaning company in the program, a crappy 1.0. Yeah. So to just sort of take action uh, is better than to take no action. Cause once you have it done, you know, you can always adjust and tweak it and get feedback and whatnot, but at least it gets the momentum rolling, which can then create change in your life. If that ball doesn't get rolling, nothing's happening for you. Um, so be willing to just take that first step, AKA do a crappy 1.0. Oh, so, so important. You're right. We even have t-shirts. <laughs> we have t-shirts made that say, don't worry, be crappy. <laughs> crappy 1.0. <laughs> and, and, and really, I want to just dig a little bit deeper because you know what? That's so such sage advice. And at the same time, I know it's not easy because a lot of people get into the whole perfectionist, which is really just kind of code for procrastination. <laughs> and what would you say, Ryan, if let, I'm just imagining Clean Nation out there going, yeah, okay, that sounds good, doing the crappy 1.0, but, you know, what if my crappy 1.0, you know, is terrible, I lose clients, I, I, you know, people are mad at me, all this what if, what if, what if. What would you say is one piece of advice to help them? And I know I'm putting you a little bit on the mindset uh, path here, uh, put you on the spot. What's one thing that works for you? Let's put it that way. What's one thing that helps you keep the monkey mind under control when you're putting a 1.0 version out? 
Well, I feel like it's a little unfair for me to say this, but <laughs> frankly, the fact that I have access to all you guys is yeah. <laughs> a big tool because I feel yeah. like I can get feedback. Did and- you just call us a big tool? <laughs> hey, you know, call it as I see it. But um, no, that's just Mike. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but for real, though, I mean, it's uh, invaluable. Kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, it takes so much of the thinking and just the the overthinking out of it. You know, being able yes. to submit a question, talk to you, talk to Mike, mm-hmm. talk to people in the group. Mm-hmm. It just it makes it easy to make a 1.0, get feedback, 2.0, 3.0, da, 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 and it's there's not this crazy lag in overthinking, and that alone is a huge. Oh, in my opinion. Ah, well, I, I love it. Thank you for the shameless promotion, but I will just what it say, is. <laughs> the, I'll boil it down to this. The moral of what just what Ryan just shared is if you're trying to do this on your own, sometimes that's really difficult to be sort of self, what I call self-examined, you know, to say, yeah, why am I doing that? And oh no, I shouldn't, you know, just leaning into that crappy 1.0 can be scary by yourself on your own. And it makes it what's Ryan saying is when you have support, when you have people who understand who really are living it also, it makes it easier to soothe that part of yourself that goes, oof, this feels scary. This feels like, oh, it's not ready. It's not ready. I'm not ready. So if you're out there, Clean Nation, and whether you're new at it, like Ryan is, relatively speaking, or you've been in this whole industry, this business a long time, but you're ready to make that change, that shift. You're ready to go to that next level. And you want that feedback. You want to have that support. Please, we are here. That's what that's what we do. We are here for you. So please reach out. All you need to do is go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk and fill out a simple form and talk to one of our coaches. Ryan talked to one of our coaches when he came on and everyone who's in our world and who's working with us had that same invitation. And I'm making that invitation to you right now. So growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. Ryan, one last parting thought, anything you want. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess have a clear vision of what your life to be and then try and back engineer it. Um, mm. Not not to go on too much of a tangent, but for me, I saw the cleaning as a means to an end of being able to create a lifestyle of freedom, both financially and time-wise. Mm. That's something I've been chasing for a long time. And um, like I, I know where I'm trying to get. So it's kind of easy to just sort of back engineer that rather than just kind of taking it day by day and you don't really know where you're going. So Love that. Yeah. Have a vision, have a plan, and retro engineer backwards from that outcome to where you are now. And many times that step, that first step is getting support, right? Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us today. And Clean Nation, thank you so much for listening in. And we will see you on the other side. See you. Bye. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is man. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.